Hi, and welcome to the Control Engineering Webcast, Overcoming the Limitations of Human Machine Interfaces, sponsored by XOR. I'm your moderator, Gary Cohen. I'm happy to join you today on behalf of Control Engineering. So before we get started here, here are some tips to help you get the most from today's webcast. If you're experiencing issues with your slides or your audio, just refresh your browser or click the Refresh Media button directly under the presenter's picture. You can control the volume of this webcast by adjusting the volume on your computer or by adjusting the volume on the webcast platform. If you're having any technical problems with the audio or the slide presentation, just click on the question mark in the top right corner of your screen to access a list of system checks to try before contacting an online technician. But if you do need a technician, just type a message into the ask a question box and someone will get to you as quickly as they can. If you have any questions for the speaker, type those in the ask a question box on the left hand side of your screen. The live Q&A session will begin after the presentation concludes. Today's webcast is being recorded and you will receive an email within a week with the link to the on-demand event. Finally, to download a certificate of completion and a PDF copy of the presentation, use the event resources tab on the left hand, left hand excuse me, side of your screen. Those documents will also be available with the on-demand version of the webcast. All right, now we get to the good part. I am happy to introduce today's presenter, Ken Kemlowski. Ken is General Manager of XOR America, an innovative technology company that has been designing, developing, and manufacturing solutions in HMI, industrial gateways, and control for nearly half a century. He has more than three decades of hands-on development expertise in the field. Ken began his career as a controls design engineer at a machine builder in the 1990s. He later worked as an application engineer in an industrial automation company, then transitioned to a sales role at an HMI manufacturer. Since 2017, he has served as the general manager of XOR America. Thanks so much for joining us today, Ken, and uh, I'm going to hand things off to you. Well, thank you, Gary, for the great introduction, and thank all of you for joining us uh, for today's presentation. Today, we're going to be discussing some of the common challenges and frustrations with human machine interfaces or HMIs. First, we'll take a look at some of the long-standing limitations of HMI displays and the factors that led to them. Next, we'll show you how all these limitations can be overcome, not with future innovations, but with technologies that already exist today. In fact, we'll even show you the alternative solutions that are available now. And finally, we'll have some time at the end of the question at the end, as Gary mentioned, to answer any questions that you might have. For those of you who aren't familiar with XOR, and I would imagine there's quite a few of you out there, uh, here's a quick introduction. We are a global technology partner delivering HMI hardware, software, and cloud solutions. We were founded in 1971 and our global headquarters is in Italy uh, where uh, it includes our R&D and Manufacturing Center of Excellence. XOR is a leader in smart manufacturing and in Industry 4.0 applications. We established our North American headquarters here in Cincinnati in 1989 and I'm excited to announce the opening of our new sales, training and manufacturing center right here uh, in Cincinnati coming in Q2 2022. As I'm sure most of you know, HMI displays have long suffered from a wide variety of design limitations, from bulky and mobile enclosures to tangled cables and connectivity challenges. Yet despite the frustrations and inefficiencies these restrictions cause us every day, They've traditionally been accepted as necessary evils by equipment manufacturers and end users. Why? Because we've essentially had no other alternatives. Now most, if not all of these limitations were once matters of necessity because HMI displays have always needed to function in demanding environments. Depending on the application, they must be capable of enduring extreme temperatures, functioning outdoors, responding to input from users wearing protective gloves or resisting uh, exposure to dust, debris, gases, vapors, or liquids, some of which may be explosive or flammable. 
even when not deployed in harsh conditions, HMIs must still be durable enough to provide years of reliable, round-the-clock use in industrial settings. While these challenges have never gone away, a variety of cost-effective innovations now make it possible for HMI displays to overcome them in ways that would save considerable time, cost, and frustration for OEMs and end users alike. Yet, most HMI displays available on the market have changed little over the years, leading to a resigned acceptance of long-standing limitations. Before we take a closer look at the key limitations we're dealing with, let's do a quick poll. Which of these is the biggest challenge that you face with HMI displays? We did put up some of the ones that we thought were the probably the biggest challenges that you face, and it's, uh, it's looking uh, pretty interesting with the way the results are coming in. So it actually is uh, spread out somewhat evenly with uh, the the biggest challenge is identified uh, by all of you, and thank you for filling out this survey, those of uh, you that have, is uh, the number one that we have up here, is uh, the biggest challenge would be dealing with harsh environments. And uh, I have to say, when I started with XOR back in two, 2017, when Gary mentioned uh, that I started, that's definitely one of the things that uh, we we pride ourselves on is uh, XOR working in these uh, harsh environments. Number two, just so you know, is uh, right now it's actually tied between uh, connectivity and then, of course, there's those other challenges that are in there too. So uh, we have uh, those going in there. So the connectivity piece, I, I think, uh, with what we have to show you today, you're, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. About 9.6% uh, of you said uh, the need to use gloves, and then uh, that we had about 17% uh, dealing with enclosures. So that other challenge, as I know, is wide open, and uh, but yeah, so thank you, everybody, and uh, that really provided a lot of insight into what you have to deal with. Okay. The classic strategy for protecting an HMI is to surround it with a miniature fortress, an immovable enclosure bolted on or built into the machine. Even in the front of the display, it, it's tough enough to withstand its environment. The back typically isn't, uh, requiring the additional protection of an enclosure. While enclosures can provide significant protection from moisture, dust, debris, and more, they come with several significant drawbacks. To begin with, enclosures are bulky, taking up more space than the display itself would otherwise require. In addition, enclosures still must allow access for the cables that provide power and data. It's not unusual for HMI displays to have multiple Ethernet ports, a power port, and possibly other connectors like USB. Finding room for these ports and a place for all those cables to go without compromising the protection required for the display frequently results in a lot of extra design work. These limitations often mean that the enclosure must be mounted where it's most convenient for space, weight, or wiring considerations, which may or may not be where you want it. For example, the HMI might be inconveniently placed at one end of the machine when it would be more efficient to have it at the other end, requiring the operator to waste time walking back and forth. Likewise, an operator who might benefit by controlling the system from different areas of the equipment at different times either doesn't have the option or would require redundant displays with one or more additional enclosures to do so. 
more recently, the inflexibility of enclosures has started creating even more frustration thanks to an ongoing trend towards smaller, less complex control cabinets. Now let's talk about connectivity. Wi-Fi technology has become almost universal in every part of the globe since the late 1990s. In fact, I'm willing to bet you have a Wi-Fi device in your hand or pocket right now and may even be using it to watch this presentation. Yet, for some reason, most HMI displays still don't use this everyday technology. The need to access the inside of the enclosure or make some other kind of manual connection to the system often causes unnecessary downtime or other delays. This can be particularly annoying if a user needs to download a program, update firmware, or export data from the HMI. Additional frustrations come into play if HMI input is required while maintenance or upgrades are being performed out of the reach of the display on the other side of the machine, for example. Most screens designed for maintenance or startup personnel can only be controlled on the display itself. As a result, either the technician must continually, continually move back and forth, or two people will be required to complete a job that one tech equipped with Wi-Fi could also do. Another technology we've become accustomed to is the capacitive display used by every modern smartphone, tablet, and other touchscreen devices we interact with daily. Panels like these use the electrical properties of the human body to enable multi-touch features like pinching, zooming, and swiping that we intuitively expect to be available on any touchscreen. Of course, the challenge of making these features available on HMIs is that many users need to wear protective gloves. Apart from a few varieties with special finger pads, most gloves reduce or completely block the electrical connection that capacitive screens need to function. As a result, most of today's HMIs continue to use analog resistive touchscreens, which uses two flexible sheets separated by air or micro dots to respond to pressure. While this enables a panel to be used with any type of glove, the reliance on pressure means resistive displays typically don't offer the broader range of modern gesture controls common in capacitive displays and are less responsive to multi-touch input when they do. In addition, the thin sheets required to make resistive HMIs function are more prone to scratches, shattering, and chemical damage than the more durable surfaces of capacitive panels. But by far the most significant limitation of HMI today is that everyone has lived with these frustrations for so long, willingly or not, that they are simply accepted. No one in the HMI manufacturing space seems to be thinking about how these challenges might be handled differently. As a result, engineers have simply been forced to design around the restrictions they impose. But what if you aren't limited by the constraints that have held HMIs back for decades? What if the capabilities you wanted and which you come to expect in most other types of electronics were available in HMI displays? Let's see what a truly modern HMI could look like simply by incorporating a few capabilities that already exist today. A standalone HMI that requires no enclosure would eliminate significant restrictions by allowing you to place operator terminals in the most convenient locations. You'd also have significantly more mounting flexibility and instead of sitting inside a bulky metal box, the HMI could be mounted on a tube, support arm, gooseneck, table stand, or a wall bracket. Now, in many environments, this would also require moisture and dust protection, not just on the front, but on the back as well. While the know-how to do this already exists, most HMI designs only incorporate IP67 protection standards in, onto the front of the panel because they assume it is it must be housed in an enclosure. The display would also need to be durable enough to function in extremes of heat and cold. From oil and gas operations in the deserts of the Middle East 
to industrial freezers. Now, let's take full advantage of the most up-to-date advances in projective capacitive touch, or PCT technology. This innovation combines a full set of motion environment sensors with a simple form of artificial intelligence. As a result, PCT displays can detect touches accurately with significantly less electrical feedback. This makes them compatible with most types of off-the-shelf gloves, enabling modern gestures like pinch and zoom and swipe that we've all been accustomed to with no special conductive e-gloves required. Our connectivity frustrations can be overcome with two simple improvements. The first solution is to replace the power and ethernet ports with a single power over ethernet connection. This gives us several advantages. All essential physical connections can be managed by a single cable and eliminating the extra ports re reduces the footprint of the device and it dispels any confusion about which wire goes where and gives you more options when it comes to positioning the display. If you need a USB port now or in the future, you can get a splitter that handles both Ethernet and USB inputs as well. Adding Wi-Fi capability to RHMI dramatically increases your flexibility, not only by removing the need for additional Ethernet ports, but by enabling operators and maintenance techs to interact with the unit via mobile devices like smartphones and tablets. <clears throat> Ideally, a secure connection to the HMI could be established using any web browser, enabling a wide variety of devices to interact with the display. Wireless connectivity also means data exports, software and firmware upgrades, maintenance tasks, and even day-to-day -day operation can all be significant, significantly simplified uh, with this Wi-Fi capability that could now be configured as either an access point or a hotspot. As I mentioned earlier, none of these technologies require a quantum leap forward. They're all proven, mature technologies that could make a modern HMI possible today. Which brings me to the best part about the HMI we just envisioned. It's not hypothetical, it already exists. We call it the JSmart. The JSmart POE HMI series was specifically designed to eliminate all the traditional limitations and frustrations that we talked about previously. The goal was to enable you to design and use equipment the way you want by making it easy to move beyond the constraints the industry has taken for granted until now. Created for real world environments, the JSmart is a multi-touch display available in six sizes ranging from five inches to 21 and a half inches. The unit features robust processing power, a durable glass front panel, and a full set of motion and environment sensors. The seven inch model and larger provide unmatched connectivity with built-in Wi-Fi. In addition, the seven inch model is available with a near field communication option that fully compliant with the NFC standards that uh, you're, you're accustomed to. JSmart displays are fully enclosed panels that provide full front and back IP67 environmental protection with class one div two certification, no enclosure is inquired or required, sorry. They're also certified for use in temperatures ranging from minus 20 to 55 degrees C or minus four to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. A variety of dedicated mounting systems enable flexible positioning and use wherever the unit is needed, indoors or out, without the need for a cabinet. In addition, every size uses the same standard 22 millimeter mount enabling fast panel on panel off changes if you need a larger or smaller display as you need to as your needs change in short it's no longer necessary for you to settle for the limitations of traditional hmi displays even if you operate in harsh or demanding environments 
By eliminating the need for bulky enclosures, simplifying the physical connections, and enabling Wi-Fi connectivity, the robust and reliable JSmart series offers decisive advantages, bringing modern capabilities to HMI displays while reducing both your equipment footprint and your total cost of ownership. I know uh, we put aside an hour for today and we wanted to make sure that we kept it short and sweet, gave you all the details that you needed. And uh, I wanna thank you for uh, your attention so far. I wanna take and open it up for some questions. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Gary. Thanks so much, Ken, much appreciated. Uh, so yeah, this is the fun part. So now Ken's gonna answer some questions here from the audience. If you do have questions, please type those for Ken in the ask a question box on your screen. We'll get to as many questions as time allows. We should have some time for some good questions today. Um, questions that we don't get to will be posted online with the archived version of this webcast. Remember to download a certificate of completion and a copy of the presentation. Use the event resources tab on the left-hand side of your screen. So uh, Ken, if you're ready, let's jump into uh, some questions here. Um, let's start with, where are you seeing the JSmart used today? That's a great question. Uh, we are definitely seeing it used in a broad range of different industries, including production environments, industrial applications, building automation, food and beverage, temperature controlled transportation, oil and gas, custom machinery, I mean, you name it, even uh, theme parks uh, have used our JSmart product on them. Hmm. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about environmental protection. Can you expand a little bit on that? Oh, yeah. What I did mention, too, was that uh, uh, our JSmart has full front and back, which would be water and dust IP67 protection as well as class one div two, which gives it the, the certification to operate in, in that environment with gases, vapors, or liquids, which enable you to keep the equipment running, running reliably and safely. So the, the JSmart meets many of the most demanding applications in the factory and in the field. During your presentation, you mentioned various mounting options. Can, it be, can the JSmart be mounted on a wall? Yes, uh, the JSmart can be mounted using a variety of mounting options. Uh, I think it was back on the, the, the previous slide, but uh, it can be mounted both inside and out of a cabinet. Uh, if you're mounting it in a cabinet, all you have to do is knock a 22 millimeter hole in the, uh, in, in the door and you can mount it that way. Uh, outside of the cabinet, we have uh, a tube uh, can be mounted on a tube. We have a, a, a tube mount uh, adapter that we offer with the product. So you don't have to go searching for a lot of different uh, mounting adapters. XOR offers those with the product. Uh, it, the wall mount is there. And then a, a variety of other options, including a, a VESA mount. Uh, so we think JSmart has the most flexible mounting options in the market. And most of the mounting options, as I mentioned, are available uh, directly here from XOR. That definitely should make things a lot easier for people. Um, let's go to uh, what software platform does the JSmart run on? Now, that is a, a, a real good question. Uh, we our, our software that we have to program these units is called JMobile. Uh, JMobile is feature rich and, and it's proven uh, throughout the years and allows for easy interface with browsers using HTML. It easily supports interfaces to cloud, surface, uh, cloud services such as uh, MQTT and is industry 4.0 ready. Uh, we uh, have other interfaces too with the J mobile software to interface uh, directly to a SQL database that's coming in the near future. Uh, we have an interface to go to our Corvina cloud offering, uh, which is uh, exciting. That's coming up real soon. And uh, also, I'm excited to announce that uh, coming up, uh, XOR is about to introduce JSmart industrial web panels, which don't actually require any specialized software at all. 
They actually are ready to interface with many of today's controllers, which are serving up uh, web pages. Very nice. Um, so you talked in the presentation quite a bit about HMIs. What else besides HMIs does XR produce? Yeah, that's uh, definitely our focus, our core, uh, but built around the HMI are other uh, offerings that naturally just fall into place. Uh, we, uh, so we, we do offer, as I think I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, hardware, software, and cloud offering. And we are definitely an ideal partner for all of your interface needs. A lot of times we like to say, you know, your, your needs, our technology helps you solve them. So uh, in addition to our standard HMI offering, uh, we do offer some HMIs that are sunlight readable, some that are, have an IP69 rating uh, designed specifically for food and beverage, anywhere that it needs to have that particular rating. Uh, we also offer gateway products uh, with all the functionality of an HMI, but without a built-in display. So you can design your interface and it would be re uh, viewed remotely, either as I mentioned, like through a Wi-Fi interface or uh, just a, a browser uh, on there. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, a wide variety of products that, uh, that XOR offers. Got it. I, I, obviously these, these new displays should make things a little bit easier, but what are some of the specific ways that these new devices can enable more efficient workflows for people? I would say uh, through the interface to the cloud, to, to grab information. I think uh, being able to as interface, as I mentioned, to SQL, uh, we have uh, a PDF viewer uh, that uh, can allow you to view PDF instructions right there at the display, uh, which will uh, make it, uh, when you talk about workflows, there's where you're getting a, a lot of the workflow going on with the instructions, what do I do? It's right there at the touch of uh, the fingertips uh, it could be either stored there locally at the display, or it could be stored off on a network network somewhere, which the screen easily interfaces with and can grab uh, the the PDFs uh, from that location too. So, yeah. Right. Um, this is a good question here. Uh, yes. Can can this be used with any of the popular PLCs, and can they replace an existing HMI panel like Red Lion? Wow, that's a uh, Someone teed that one up there very nice. So, uh, yeah, the, the uh, uh, so we, the J Mobile software has at least uh, 250 protocols uh, to support all of the, the PLC offerings that are out there. And a lot of the, the native, uh, even like the native tags of those PLCs can be imported very easily into uh, an XOR HMI. So uh, depending on the type of HMI that you are looking to replace, uh, we have an offering from, you know, the, the JSmart is a very easy, knock a little 22 millimeter hole, drop it in if you wanted to put it into an existing enclosure, uh, or we have other offerings, our EX700 family, which has more of a traditional hardwired ethernet ports and USB ports, and uh, even the ability to add a plug-in module on the back and have it interface, the J-Mobile software interface to uh, Codasys. And uh, Codasys is a, a PLC software that uh, can run on our hardware and now give you an HMI and a PLC solution. So. I guess, uh, long story short, uh, we support a lot of the PLCs out there and we easily can help our customers migrate from uh, the current platform they're on, whether it's Red Lion as uh, was asked or, or any of the other platforms. Got it. Uh, this question actually is right up my alley as a, as a cybersecurity person. Um, cybersecurity obviously is a growing concern, ever increasing concern. What built-in features are you seeing in HMIs to deal with these sorts of concerns that, uh, that are coming up from all the recent attacks that have been happening? Yeah, so um, starting in about 2014, 
we maybe it was a little bit after that we started offering linux as the uh, core operating system uh, running on our hardware since uh, we made that move we've been continuously working with uh, the the security aspect uh, with linux and it's given us more freedom to be able to to really lock these hmis down and and to give you a good example uh, we've We've worked with some larger H, uh, building automation uh, manufacturers, and, and they are very concerned as well about cyber attacks. So somebody getting in and taking control of the whole building, they have put our HMIs to the test, and they've come out with flying colors. They've been able to just pass all the different tests that they were able to, uh, to put on the XOR HMIs. That's uh, def definitely good news in today's environment. Mm -hmm. um, let's go with, have, have any of your devices been tested with Ignition SCADA HMI software? We, uh, the HMI, a lot of uh, what we refer to as a dedicated HMI, as I mentioned, it runs Linux, uh, but it's really not an open like uh, Linux environment uh, meant to run J mobile software. Uh, and, as I mentioned, coming up soon uh, with the JSmart product, we'll have just a web browser offering, so you don't need any software. And today we offer our EX700 product with that browser software uh, capability. And I can't answer it for 100% certainty, but I am pretty sure that the Ignition uh, interface will serve up some web pages, which will allow you to get uh, that industrial web browser interface and have it interface to a uh, ignition SCADA system. Uh, but uh, feel free to reach out to our team um, and we can dig into it further and maybe do a proof of concept with you. Sounds great. Uh, let's go with, do the JSmart HMIs have to be programmed or are they plug and play? Um, the, going back to that J mobile software, we, with that particular aspect of it, depending on what you want to do, you design your screens with the J mobile software. So to that aspect of it, I would say they're not plug and play because you need to create the screens, you need to create the interface. And as a matter of fact, we've worked hand in hand with some customers. One of our larger customers uh, reached out to a, a user interface uh, consultant and uh, talking about the user experience and came up with a, a way that they wanted their whole screens to flow. And they worked with us. Our application engineers worked with them, took those user interface screens, and turned it into reality using the uh, J-Mobile software. So the software, as I mentioned, is very feature rich. So to answer your question, not plug and play there. Uh, but for the most part, uh, probably 95% plug and play if you want to use our web panels and you have a device that's serving up web pages, you get the web panel out of the box, you probably need to do a little bit of setup, set up the ethernet IP address or whatever, and plug it in and you're ready to go. So depending on your application, I, I could say either way. Got it, got it. So you mentioned uh, you had a 21 inch model. Could that replace an industrial computer? Actually, I don't see too many 21 inch HMI offerings on the market. And that is a popular uh, application that we've seen is people that have, or customers that have wanted the larger 21 inch uh, display, uh, they have been sort of forced to go to an industrial computer. Now that we have offered this, not only in the JSmart product family, but also our EX700 family, the 21 inch offering, we are seeing many customers migrate from an industrial PC, which by the way, uh, those have really become a long lead time with the component shortages and everything else. The industrial PCs are using a lot of those components 
that have been in high demand uh, post COVID here. So uh, the HMI, 21 inch HMI is a perfect replacement for uh, the 21 inch uh, or larger IPC. Interesting. Uh, great, thank you. Um, let's see, can you have multiple HMIs talking to one PLC if we wanted to put more enclosureless operator stations around the machine? I'm loving all these questions. This is great. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I was afraid, hey, there's only going to be a couple of questions, but I'm, I'm really glad to hear all the excitement about uh, the JSmart product. And to answer your question, we, we have various ways to do multiple HMIs uh, around the machine. Depending on the protocol or how we're talking to the PLC, we can just have each one be its own little drop uh, on that protocol. Uh, typically, Ethernet allows uh, for multiple HMIs to be dropped around. And uh, we also have the ability to, with uh, our gateway product that I mentioned uh, called the EXWare, to serve up screens and the HMI can be a client. And we can have multiple screens interacting with that one device that could also be talking to the PLC. So multiple ways that uh, we can allow that connectivity to have multiple HMIs talking to one PLC. Perfect. Um, just want to take a second to, to second what Ken was just saying. Thanks so much, everybody, for all the great questions that came in. We really appreciate the engagement. And, and thank you again to our great speaker, Ken Kemlowski, for yeah. sharing his time and expertise. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. And look forward to, uh, uh, if you can reach out to our team, we'll be glad to help you. We've got a, a great group of people here at XOR. Uh, I think it might have been on the last slide, but we've created the landing page uh, for this. And you'll see it in your PDF presentation that Gary mentioned that uh, you'll be sent out to with the XORint.com uh, forward slash EN forward slash reliable. So, uh, Look forward to working with you, and thank you so much for your interest. Great. And I'd also like to extend a special thanks to our sponsor, XOR, for sponsoring today's event. Uh, now that we are just about done, we're not quite done, we do want to hear how we did. So an exit survey is going to pop up on your screen as soon as this webcast ends. Please take a moment to complete it because we use this information to improve our future webcasts. Finally, on behalf of Control Engineering and XOR, I'd like to thank you for attending. This concludes our webcast. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.